This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Med Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Uh, the Med Canadian will be in Cary, Ohio this uh, Thursday in, in Cary, Ohio from 3 to 7 p.m., at the Market 113, which is located on East Finley Street near the intersection of South Van Street, as well as this Saturday in Tiffin, Ohio, between 5 and 9 p.m., the Tiffin Brewery, which is located on Wall Street. So if you have time, going to grab some dinner or check them out after the Ohio State-Oregon game, go check out the Mad Canadian um, this Friday and Saturday. Be sure to check out his social medias to find out more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast order, veteran-owned coffee company. They do not roast your beans until you order them. Remember back in the day, you'd go to McDonald's or whatever, and they just have all the burgers lined up on a thing underneath the heat lamp. And they don't really do that anymore because everyone found out that made the hamburgers terrible. Well, that's what all the other coffee companies are doing to you. They're all those beans were roasted weeks ago, stuck in a truck, stuck on a shelf, stuck in a warehouse. Lord knows where they were stuck and how long they were stuck there. Not with the Iron Bean Coffee Company. It's not roasted until you order it. You are getting the freshest possible organic fair trade Merino. Let's, let's slow that one in there. <laughs> coffee you could possibly get. Order your new favorite coffee today at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Oh, we've picked up a, a few new people during the ad read, Kyle. We got a Nomad. We got a Stuart. Added to our collection of a Buckeye Zack and a Gangland. We, uh, yes, thanks for everyone joining. Uh, thanks everyone on YouTube for listening in. How are we feeling about the Oregon game? How are we feeling? It's Know Your Enemy time. It is time yes. to get to know our enemies. It's Oregon. It's a big boy. We'll, we'll get into it. Don't you worry. We'll get into it. All right. On the over? You mean to cover or the over? Okay. All right. It's let's go ahead and. It's all good. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing right over here. How are you doing tonight, Jared? I feel like it's the type of episode where I'm going to play with my microphone too much. Welcome to the Buckeye Sloopcast, Buckeye Nation's um, most controversial podcast. At least if our, if our likes to dislikes on YouTube have anything to say about it. <laughs> you like us or you don't. And if you don't, go somewhere else. <laughs> All right, um, it is it is our know your enemy episode and before we get to know our enemy uh got he some, likes it nomad <laughs> um we got some black stripe news here uh we have two black stripes that happened this week so far we have kicker noah ruggles and wide receiver Jaden ballard that is now all of the true freshman wide receivers with their black stripe removed, I do believe. And uh, yeah, it's it, what, what do you got to say? I, I love this class. This class is going to lead Ohio State places. Will it be this year? Will it be next year? Um, you know, on one hand, next year, you're going to have a bunch of new faces at wide receiver. But that also means you're going to lose two good guys. You're going to have a quarterback with more experience, potentially. Um, but you're also going to lose a ton of pieces on the offensive line. But, you know, all of that, those are all worries for um, the next wasteland. Certainly not, certainly not midseason conversation, which, Kyle, I guess we're kind of in midseason now. It's not like 
middle of the season, but it's it's midseason. We're in between the beginning and the end. Therefore, we're in midseason, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's let us get into the meat of our episode. We we get to know your enemy. Oh, you know, sh- shenanigans, shenanigans. That's what you missed. Know your enemy. The Oregon Ducks. Kyle, the Oregon Ducks roll into Columbus at noon. That's 9 a.m. their time. Don't let do not let that get past you. 9 a.m. their time. Noon for everyone else on the East Coast anyway. And just, you know, everywhere. And Kyle. This is like an NFL thing. This is an NFL thing that gamblers like to watch, which is essentially uh-huh. watch when a West Coast team travels east and plays in that one o'clock hour in like that first mm-hmm. NFL slot hour. They always yep. play a little more sluggish because they're playing a game. What is right at the, you know, they are maybe getting up a little bit earlier than they're used to. And then they're definitely playing earlier than they're used to. It's. It's uh, it can be a disadvantage for sure. No, it absolutely can, especially for the way Oregon looked last weekend. Yeah, they're going to need everything they can get their hands on to to pull out a W in Columbus. Yeah, especially after coming off, especially coming off a 31 to 24 victory. Uh, last weekend against Fresno State, definitely not a good showing overall. Very, very sluggish to start. And then on top of what Jared just said here, sluggish of what most West Coast teams playing in the East Coast early on. Could it smell disaster this weekend? Well, it would it would add to what could already be fairly disastrous for Oregon. Tribodeau gets rolled up on. This is a huge storyline that we'll be watching. Um, Mario Cristobal comes out. The Oregon head coach comes out and says, uh, it's going to be day to day. Now, I post this in the discord. Someone asks, does that mean he's even practicing? Does it th- is he even practicing if he's. If he's day to day and if he's practicing, is he contact press? What does that mean? And I go, don't worry about it, because. As I like to tell you guys all the time, the head coach is under no obligation to tell us the truth. Rule number one. Rule number one, the doctor lies. The head coach is under no obligation to tell us the truth. And by the way, good good on him. Don't tell us the truth. We don't need to know that. In the same way that I, as a general member of the fan public, don't want to know how Josh Proctor is doing. I mean, I, I kind of want to know how Josh Proctor's doing, but I don't want Oregon to know how Josh Proctor's doing. Well, Man, the chat, know how Josh the chat is, doing. is going off today. <laughs> well, they're doing their own little thing there. So let's let's get into knowing our enemy, the Oregon Ducks. Mentioned that they are coming off a 31 to 24 victory last weekend over Fresno State. And pretty balanced attack against Fresno State, 172 in the air, 186 on the ground. But it's you can't you can't judge this team based off one game so far this season. So we got to know a little bit more about the players on this team here. Uh, we have how many is it here? One, two, three. We got four players on this team who were preseason first and second team. Uh, offense and defense. Yeah, so all uh, American per pick six preview. Yes. Uh, running back uh, CJ Verdell uh, mentioned uh, Thibodeau already. Uh, the defensive end. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more about uh, corner Kyle Wright, as well as um, Varon McKinley as well. The two um, talented uh, DBs that Oregon has. So the, I think the, the, the question that I think is on everyone's mind that 
we can, I mean, first, first and foremost, the, the, the questions about Tripodo, right? But we, we can't answer that. So the, the one we're just going to have to sit back and wait with everyone else. The second answer, or the second question that everyone once answered is who is Oregon? Is Oregon a preseason top 10 team with elite defensive players, even if it's a sparse, you know, not maybe not depth, not maybe not like elite depth, but like elite players, preseason All-Americans, preseason All-American running back, um, maybe the best defensive player in all of college football in Tribodeo, good linebackers, good defensive backs. You have that on one hand. What, what seems to be a pretty hyped up team, a preseason hyped up team. And then you have the team that played Tulane last week. So who's the real Oregon? We, we don't have a sample size to really say, but I'll be damned if we can't speculate. Yep. So quarterback Anthony Brown, they transfer from Boston College a couple of years ago. I don't care what Chris Davis has to say. <laughs> historically here, Anthony Brown is a 55% completion quarterback. Not, not all that good. 55%. And he's thrown 43 touchdowns and 20 interceptions, pretty much almost two to one. Not that good either. So. And then in the, this last game here against Fresno so by State, the way, he, two, two, two lane was, was Oklahoma Fresno state. Uh, so this last game, Anthony Brown, 15 for 24, 172 yards in the air and rushed for 75 on the ground. So this is a mobile Thanks, quarterback Chad. that Ohio State's going to have to going to have to really watch out for because in the past, Ohio State has struggled from time to time with mobile quarterbacks. Are they going to are they going to have that same kind of um, issues this weekend? Well, from everything that we're seeing so far, we're going to see a lot more nickel package. So we're going to see a lot more of Hopefully, um, Jared's Jared's buddy here, Cody Simon. Hopefully, we'll see a little bit more of him in this package instead of what we typically saw last weekend when Austin did more of a four three. We're going to see more of a four two five uh, this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, Ohio State. We base nickel. Um, this this Oregon is is not Minnesota. <laughs> let's just let's just go ahead and say that as obvious as it might be to say, and it's it's painfully obvious to say. Oregon is not Minnesota. Uh, yeah, they aren't even the same state. Correct, England. Um, for starters, uh, I don't believe and I'm going out on a, I'm going out on a limb on this one, Kyle. I don't think we're going to see Oregon in any seven offensive lineman sets. No. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. I don't believe that we need to be uh, uh, concerned about a massive seniored offensive line from Minnesota or excuse me, from no. Oregon. Nope. No. Uh, I, I think this is a game in which the defensive ends for Ohio state feast. Oh, and the defensive tackles for that matter. Um, I think we saw spurts of Zachary Harrison and I think we saw defensive tackles and defensive ends flash here and there. But given the size and the experience and the number of offensive linemen Minnesota had out there, it was it was a bit hard. I don't believe that's going to be an issue this time around. Uh, I, I think if we're looking for matchups that Ohio State can exploit, I am 100 percent looking at Ohio State's defensive line versus Oregon's offensive line. Yep, absolutely. And I agree. I think Aussie's defensive line is going to be able to feast as long as Ohio State's able to do more of a press coverage. Because anytime that Ohio State really gets after the quarterback, <laughs> got to watch out. I think somebody mentioned it here. Um, no Everyone's here. been mentioning it. Should, should, all we, be, should, we, be, should we be concerned about the short dumps and slant passes? If you're if you're really rushing the quarterback here, getting them a lot of pressure, you need to press up a little bit more and not give them that five yard cushion there. Yeah, and, and quite frankly, a lot of that has that a lot of that has to do with Proctor, 
you know, you, you can play a little not not that they have to this point, but you can play a little more press if you have your experienced safety back there who can be a bit of a safety blanket in case the wide receiver gets away. At the same time, uh, I do believe that Ohio State, again, has a huge advantage along the trenches, especially on defense. So I believe that you should be able to get after the quarterback pretty quickly, which would also help aid in pressing the, you know, getting your defensive backs up and pressing the wide receivers, because presumably they shouldn't have a ton of time to pass the ball. Yeah, Nomad just absolutely. hit level 33 in our discord. And that's impressive considering the amount of time you've been here. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see who, who has to keep an eye out for, for Oregon here. Uh, they did run a lot with their backup running back up Travis die who had 13 carries uh, their starter. CJ had 18. So you probably see a lot of um, running back substitutions here. Uh, wide receivers here. Their main, their main two is uh, Johnny Johnson, the third who had the most reception yards and the lone receiving touchdown uh, last weekend, uh, as well as a sophomore, uh, uh, Micah Pittman as well. And they do have a really good uh, deep threat, true freshman uh, named Troy Franklin, uh, who is number 11, got to keep an eye out for as well. Oh, and since this is the year of the tight end, uh, I'll throw in there uh, Spencer Webb as well too. He had three. He had three catches as well uh, in last weekend's game. Yeah. So I think when it comes down to it, Kyle, I like Ohio State's chances here. Uh, now that being said, I, I mean I think Ohio State wins. Can I just say that? I'm gonna say that now. I, I might be jumping. Might be jumping ahead a little bit. I think Ohio State wins. So in your opinion, what's the difference between Ohio State, like maybe covering, winning by 10 points, it being a contest going into the fourth quarter versus Ohio State blowing out Oregon? What, where do you see that difference being made? Whether it be a position group matchup or a player or I don't know, where where, where do you see Ohio State? Who do you see Ohio State or on Oregon, for that matter, making that difference between Ohio State winning and Ohio State making a statement? I, I think I think the group that Oregon really needs to step up here is probably their linebackers. They have a really good trio of linebackers, um, young, but they have a really good uh, trio of linebackers that can really get after Ohio State. Uh, Funa, Swell, and Flo. Uh, I think they have the advantage in terms of linebackers overall than Ohio State. But, but I think that's where Ohio State might have an advantage too with, um, with our tight end, uh, Ruckert. I think, I think Ruckert poses a big, big uh, mismatch with their linebackers. I think their linebackers are more, are play more of like a defensive end than a like a speedy um big type of linebacker. So I think I think if Ohio State does it right, I think we could I think Ruckert could have a big game here. Yeah. And by the way, um Austin says, wait, his name is Johnny Johnson the third. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. Kyle, let's do an ad read and then I'll I'll come back with uh my I'll I'll tell you what I thought about what you've just said. How about that? All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, let's go ahead and hear from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, mentioned at the top of the show, and I'll mention again here in case those who have missed it. If you want some of that sweet, sweet, good old Mad Canadian Barbecue, him and his food truck will be in Cary this Thursday. So as this episode is being released, this Thursday, 3 to 7 p.m. in Cary, Ohio at Market 113th, which is on East Finley Street near the intersection of South Van Street. If you can't make it there, head on up to Tiffin after the Ohio State Oregon game between 5 and 9 p.m. at the Tiffin Brewery, uh, which is located on Wall Street up in Tiffin, Ohio, to get some of that sweet, sweet, good old Mad Canadian barbecue. Uh, great. I give, I, give it, I give it five stars. Jared gives it five stars. Everybody 
that I know has given the Mad Canadian five stars, some of the best barbecue that you can get in Northwest Ohio. Be sure to check out his social media to find out more news and information about the future of his food truck whereabouts. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company uh, is an Ohio-based, Marine-owned, Fair Trade certified, USDA organic certified coffee company. Uh, they have a bunch of amazing coffees, flavored coffees, dark roast coffees, medium roast coffees. They even have a medium, medium light. It's, it's, it's a light roast. We'll call it a light roast. Uh, that one's called the Loki. It's a wet process blend uh, higher in caffeine than you might expect from a from a light coffee. Uh, still low in acidity, but still has that real nice, rich taste. Again, a, a much richer taste than you'd expect from some light blends. Um, it has lots of flagr uh, <laughs> flagrance? fragrance, including floral notes. That's what I was attempting to say. Um, it also has some citrus notes in there. Um, looking at, for some other lighter coffees, their medium roast are the Cast Iron, the Ride or Die, the Rage Against the Dying of the Lights, um, the cast iron and the rider die um, are, I, I think, two of my absolute favorites that he has, period. Um, and I, I think if you're if you're looking, I think if you're looking for a place to start and you're a medium roast person, I'd start with one of those two. I still really like the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, but I think I would start with either the cast iron or the rider die. Like if you're looking for a coffee recommendation from me, I'd say either one of those two if you want a medium roast. Or if you want a dark roast, maybe start with the integrity. But with uh, but like I said, you can just go check out all those different coffees for yourself at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle talked a lot about Oregon's linebackers during the last, uh, right before the ad read. They're a very aggressive, which I think really goes to what you're saying, Kyle, about one, they just naturally play aggressive, and two, they're just defensively, they like to blitz their linebackers a lot. They like to create pressure a lot, which I think should open up the middle of the field for, as you said, Jeremy Rucker. But I think also JSN should find some some openness in the middle of the field. Um, so I, I think, yeah, I think that's where you need to focus. But I think another thing we need to focus on is Ohio State having I believe an advantage in the at least the interior of the offensive line, but also I think the entire trench if Thibodeau's out. If Thibodeau's out, and by the way, there's also and they're pretty unsubstantiated at this point. We're talking like message board stuff, so I'm not saying this is a for sure thing. They also have rumors out there that uh Drew Manthus and Justin Flo, two wide receiver, excuse me, two linebackers for Oregon are potentially also not feeling great. And, and even if uh, Thibodeau does play, to what extent will he be ready? You know, is he practicing? How bad's that ankle? You know, we saw Chase Young, his sophomore season, not have a great year. Why? Because he was struggling with sprained ankles all year. And then when he came back healthy as a junior, we saw what he was capable of. When you have to get that body lean, when you have to get that leverage as a defensive end, having bad ankles is really going to limit your mobility to be able to do that. So if that ankle is as bad as if he's really day to day, like if it's really Wednesday and if he's really day to day still on Wednesday, if that's the truth, that indicates to me that even if he does play, he's not going to be anywhere near 100%. But again, that's assuming that Cristobal's telling us the truth when he says that. Mm -hmm. Yep. But look, look for Ohio State. I think, as Kyle was saying, look for Ohio State to take advantage of those aggressive, young, talented, maybe even more inexperienced, depending upon injury situation, linebackers with some stuff over the middle. Okay, Kyle. Um, let's see. Where where do we want to go next? I think we have Austin's over unders. Uh, Austin from the Discord uh, gave us some over unders. So let's roll through these real quick. Great. 
Sure. So the first one here is Ohio State fumble recoveries set at one and a half. Going to go under. I feel like getting two fumble recoveries in a game, certainly possible, but uh, it's I wouldn't ever bet money on it. Now, if it's the other way around, it could be something just because last game, again, being Fresno State, but Oregon forced four fumbles and recovered two of them. But then yeah. again, Oregon did lose one and lost that one as well, too, in that game, too. But yeah, not, not I, forced I, I fumbles. Under, Fumble I, yeah, I, think, I, think, I think I'll go under. Yeah, I think I'll go under there. Uh, all right, next one. Total yards for Trey Henderson. 54.5 over I over 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 I bumped that up to maybe like 84 and a half um I'm assuming he means from scrimmage because we did see not he didn't return it but we did see uh Henderson line up as a kick returner so I'm just yes. I just want to clarify that I'm I'm going to assume that this means from the line of scrimmage yeah, he's uh, Austin, Austin says, says yeah, yeah from, from the scrimmage. line of scrimmage. Um, but that also includes receiving yards. You're not taking that away from me, Austin. So I'm absolutely going over. Yes. All right. Next one. Touchdowns for Stroud. Three and a half. Over. I'm going to go over, over as well. Yeah, over. I'm not Ooh, even hesitating this one, on that one. This one, I so want this one to be over. Tight end catches at five and a half. I want this to be over. I want this to be over. Under. <laughs> but it's going to be under. Yeah. <laughs> I want it, want that to be over. It could be, it really could be over. Um, I feel like in the games in which they lean on Rucker, they have leaned on Rutger in the past have been big games. So mm -hmm. if there's a game in September in which Rucker gets, a, gets over five catches, I think this is the one. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, sex allowed two and a half. Now, our state has not given up a sack yet. So I'm going to go with under, especially, especially if yeah, it's... Thibodeau is not in. Give me the under. I forget the exact statistic, but I, I think Thibodeau leads over the past two seasons. Over the past two seasons, Thibodeau leads in tackles for loss in the entire country. Um, this, you know, obviously sacks included in that. Uh, yeah, it can't be stated how th this one's almost not fair with not knowing the status of Thibodeau, but I'm going to say under. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. Uh, next one. Ohio State offensive touchdowns of 20 yards or more, two and a half. Now, every touchdown in last weekend's game from the offense was from 30 yards or more. So I'm going to say over, I'll say over here. Ohio state just has such big play capabilities here. And I, I think Oregon might struggle here. I know they got a couple of good defensive backs and their linebacker crews pretty good, but man, they just do not. They just do not stack to the wide receiver talent and Rucker as well. That, can really get out in space. Oregon has a very aggressive defense. I feel like Ohio State is going to have a bunch of drives that are basically under six plays, either because they had to punt or because they scored that quickly. I don't mm -hmm. expect Ohio State to have too many drives of 10, 12 plays. Nomad, Nomad says, um, he says, Ohio State gets a kickoff return touchdown for the first time in forever. Man, if Ohio State gets a kickoff return, I'd be jumping up and down here. I think everybody would be. <laughs> um, over under interceptions by Ohio State defensive backs, one and a half. That's a that's a good number. That's a good number. I, it's it's I don't know. Just by limiting it to the defensive backs, I'm going to say under just because I feel like that's statistically unlikely, no matter what the situation is. Yeah. Kyle, we are super. My, 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 my brain says under, but my heart wants to say over. <laughs> so I'll go under. Kyle, we are super duper duper over on time. Um, we're already at, at 30 minutes almost. So um, right. let's go ahead and predict this game. Saturday. 
the 11th of September, noon kickoff. We have the Gus Johnson special on Fox. Ohio State favored Kyle. When CBS locked this number in, it was at 13 and a half. And thank God, because it's already gone up. And boy, do I like staying underneath that 14 point mark. So thank God mm. we did, in fact, lock it in at 13 and a half. I'm going Ohio State to win and cover. Yep, I have the same. 13 and a half is such a sweet, sweet number. So sweet. So, 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 so very sweet. All right. Yep, Kyle, I, our guest picker this week. Sorry, we're, we're way over on time. Our guest picker this week is Stuart E4, U.S. vet. Um, he writes here. Ohio State versus Oregon. Here we go, boys. This is the only game that matters this week. By the way, and if you've looked at the schedule, that's true. <laughs> um, I wish you looked good, but youthful in moments. Absolutely. Oregon looked well. I don't know how they looked because no one has the Pac-12 network. I may have been streaming that one illegally, you guys. Um, I believe Ohio State will have fixed most of their problems and will settle in with the starters uh, versus the continued subbing. Uh, to get third stringers playing time. Our O-line will handle their D-line. Our D-line will handle their O-line. I, I agree with all of this, by the way. The game is won in the trenches, and we've got that covered. Beyond that, the only group I see as better position group is Oregon's linebackers, but they've decided to stay in the box and get washed out or drop back and get Portland. Um, Ohio State wins 45-28. to 28. By the way, we all have almost the exact same score almost but yeah. not exact so it's kind of funny so he has 45 to 28 i have 45 to 27 so almost exactly what i had you know, you know what mine is sure 45 to 24 <laughs> nice which are all covers kyle which are all co were you that quick because you just niced that Yes. Nice. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I'll say players to watch. I have Mayan Williams. I think Oz State is going to really just assert their dominance on the ground, just like what Stewart says here. Uh, I think Mayan Williams will get over 100 yards in this game. If they do, no worries here for Buckeye fans. Uh, Stewart says his is Dwan Jones. I'm going with Zachary Harrison. I think this is a game that, like I said, the, the Ohio State defensive ends really come out. Mm -hmm. All right. Enemy player to watch. Tribido. Even if he even if he plays at 75 percent, it's still Tribido. Uh, this guy is potentially the first overall pick in the entire NFL draft next spring. Yep. They cannot be understated how good Thibodeau is. I, I know. I, I don't know why I do it. I, I Even when I know how to pronounce someone's name, I can't form my lips to do it. Thibodeau, um, again, potentially the number one overall player in the entire draft. It cannot be overstated how great he is when he's at 100%. What we don't know is, is he at 100% or not? Yep. Uh, Stuart and I, go with the same uh, Anthony Brown, the quarterback. Uh, you got a mobile quarterback. He's going to have to do, he's going to have to perform a miracle to keep, keep Oregon in the game. They're going to have to put up a lot of points to keep up with Ohio state. So it's got to come down to the arm and um, legs of Anthony Brown. Uh, key matchup to watch Ohio state's defensive line versus Oregon's offensive line. Ohio State can limit Oregon's time holding the ball, which is what really shot them in the foot last week with Minnesota. But again, Minnesota is not Oregon. Oregon is not Minnesota. But Ohio State, if, if they can dominate both lines of scrimmage, but I'm going to go with the Ohio State's defensive line versus Oregon's offensive line. I have, and I've mentioned this earlier, so those who can guess what I'm going to pick here, Oregon does linebacker versus Jeremy Ruckert. That's just mean gangland. <laughs> all right. Um, so we both, all three of us picked the spread. We picked the winner here, picked the final score. I think that's it here. Um, you want to do some quick, quick, quick. Hyper quick. 
like hyper quick two word ask, answers. Ask questions. All right, uh, we'll do one from from each person here. So apologize if everybody posted a bunch here, but we got to get moving here. So Austin Formation, how surprised would you be if Minnesota won the Big Northwest on a scale of one to ten? How surprised would I be if Minnesota? I'm sorry, Minnesota, Minnesota won the Big Ten West. Yes. Um. Not at all surprised. Um. Not at all surprised. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what is that? Is that is that a two or a nine? I I forget what the scale was, but either a two or a nine in favor of Minnesota. Yeah, I I would be surprised as well, especially with what we've heard from. Hell no, um, Stewart. Yeah, especially from the news that we got regarding um, their running back, too. Uh, Stewart asks, is this Oregon team better than the 2014-15 team? No. No. No, no not even not close. Even close. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. No, not close. Nomad, how many picks I get correct in week two after that disaster of showing in week one? And he has three and a half. Well, I believe in you. I'm going over. Yes. I, I agree. I'll go over as well. Uh, last one here, Buckeye Zach. Uh, with week one in the review and week two fastly approaching, what is what is it that the rest of college football world must do to match the Alabama dominance? Pray. <laughs> like you just you have to recruit better. That's it. Georgia is attempting to do it. Clemson's attempting to do it. Ohio State's attempting to do it. You have to recruit better. Oregon, or excuse me, Alabama, I have Oregon on the brain. Alabama just keeps winning recruiting titles. And yep. until you can stop them from doing that, good luck. You, you have to recruit better. Just that simple. Right, I, I think that's it. That's all the questions we have because we are way over in time, Jared. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm gonna have to sorry sorry Stuart I know you like making me say the names but y'all have already been making fun of me and we're super over on time so I am gonna have to let that go uh, for this game sorry about that or for this episode sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no mad that's a great yeah what what needs to happen Saban Saban needs to be Saban needs to retire. All right um yeah again that's the show. So I want to encourage everyone, just go to the sloopcast.com. That's where you're going to have find links to all of our stuff. Um, if you like what we do here, please be sure to follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, follow our YouTube channel, as well as the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel. Please follow both of those channels. Um, Stuart, if we have time to do it in the Friday show, we'll do it in the Friday show. I promise. Um, and. Also, like if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to leave us a comment um, and please be sure to give us a like. Kyle, do you have anything? Stuart's not happy with me for skipping his segment and I have already apologized. A few former Buckeye notes here. Bradley Roby heading down to the New Orleans Buckeyes. And a trio of former Buckeyes have been named captain captains for the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, wow. That is Joe Burrow, Von Bell, and Sam Hubbard. How about that? It was after they just released like two Buckeyes as well. <laughs> yes. All right, that's it. That's it. Let's go ahead and end the episode, Jared. All right, that's it for Kyle's thing. Uh, tonight's ending music will be The Raging Nathans. Uh, they're a punk band um, out of Ohio. I, I, I maybe Dayton, I forget, but definitely out of Ohio. They're the Raging Nathans. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Raging Nathans. Once again, YouTube, here come the thing. Here come the links to follow us. Please be sure to do that. Leave a nice comment. Leave us a like and uh, that's it. Peace.